I'm Christy Campbell with IWG. I'm the Deli Bakery Specialist for the Nashville Division. And we are going to show you today how to do uh, something that any store can do. Uh, you don't have to have oven equipment. You don't have to have any particular decorating skills. Uh, it's something that you can sell fresh in your stores no matter what your setup is. It's our uh, fudge brownies. And today I'm going to show you how to do the plain chocolate iced ones, fudge with walnuts. We'll have caramel, cream cheese, and German chocolate. And before you get started, you're going to need, of course, a case of the brownies. And I'll show you uh, more about how they come packaged and things like that in a minute. You're going to have to have the different icings that you want to decorate with. For the plain fudge, we're going to use uh, the fudge icing for that. We're also going to do fudge iced with walnuts. We're going to do caramel, cream cheese, and German chocolate. So you can order these icings from the warehouse, of course. And we have a couple of garnishes uh, from the shelf. Uh, depending on the quantity that you're going to do, you can use packages like these. It may be more cost effective to order them in bulk from the warehouse as well. Um, you're going to have your choice of packaging. We have several varieties that are available from Bunzel. These are the ones that we chose today. Um, a spatula, a knife, or a bench scraper. Uh, either one will work. Those you can also get from uh, Deco Pack. You're going to need um, sanitized work surface. Um, I, just a, a small table will do. You don't need a lot of room and gloves. Okay, the product that we're using today is the Rich's Half Sheet Brownie without nuts. When you get your case of brownies in, you're going to get five slabs wrapped in plastic. And on the sides of the box, if you'll notice, there's hash marks to show you how and where to cut for consistency. Um, each sheet also has paper backing, so before you do anything, you're going to want to pick up your sheets and peel the backing off. Make sure you do that with all of them. And you see they're frozen, pre-baked, ready to go. And then they'll just sit right back down in there and that'll catch most of the mess from your production. And then to, do, uh, to start off, we're going to do the plain chocolate. You can either use your spatula to spread the icing or I use a gloved hand. Um, either way, because you're going to um, texturize it at the end. So to me, this is just easier, but it's a matter of preference. You're going to take your icing, you're going to scoop out a handful of icing and just spread it across. It doesn't need to be perfect because there again, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have texture at the end. The easiest way to keep from tearing the brownie is to go outside in. When you come to your edges, uh, they're going to be just a little neater looking if you're coming in from the outside. So you just keep spreading that out. Go along your edges. Turn it and come the other way. Uh oh. <laughs> Maybe a little more icing. And you're going to go back and cover any obvious imperfections. And that is the fudge ice brownie. It's ready to cut. If you do the brownies with the walnuts, I would suggest doing them last so that you don't run the uh, cross-contamination risk. Otherwise, you'll have to clean and sanitize your table in between this one and the next variety. If you do this one last, you can just clean and sanitize at the end and be done with it. These are fairly large pieces. You can, uh, if you'd like, you could 
actually chop them up into a little bit smaller piece. Uh, just depends on the amount of texture and the look that you're going for. Walnut brownies. Okay, the next flavor we're gonna do is the caramel. Uh, for stores that have a full bakery, I have a bag of the melted fudge icing to use for garnish. For stores that don't have a full bakery, you can use uh, chocolate syrup off the shelf. Most, uh, most stores do just fine with that. It's a small, you know, small bottle that can be stored with the rest of your icings and supplies, and it's inexpensive. So again, we're just gonna take a handful of the icing, So there's the caramel. And then you can do a couple different things. Uh, for this one, we're just gonna do some string icing. I'll show you another pattern here in a few minutes that you can do. But I'm just gonna just squeeze it out. You can do that as little or as much as you want. And that is the caramel brownie. Okay, next we're gonna do the German chocolate. And for the garnish on the German chocolate, uh, we picked the flake coconut. Okay. And I changed my glove uh, just because if you don't end up using all of your bag of coconut, you're going to uh, get the icing into it, um, and you want to be—you don't want to have that um, that in there for later. So you're just going to take your coconut, sprinkle it across, not too heavy, so that you can see the icing underneath. But just uh, like I said, something for the contrast. And that's it, German chocolate brownies. Okay, for the cream cheese brownie, we're gonna do something a little bit different. And for anybody that's ever made Napoleons, you're going to, um, you're gonna recognize this pattern. You can take your icing or your chocolate syrup and you're gonna make straight lines. You can space them as close or as far apart as you want. Um, spacing them closer together is gonna to give you a tighter pattern further apart. It's gonna be a larger pattern, but either way it still comes out really pretty. Then you take a knife or a spatula and you just alternate directions. You go up and then back across your lines. And you're gonna to wanna to do this um, before your icing dries because once either the icing dries and sets, it doesn't look as nice, it doesn't look as smooth. And there's cream cheese brownies. This is the packaging that we've chosen for the nine count brownie. And for the nine count, uh, I'm gonna cut just along the exact score marks. Um, you take your bench scraper and you just press it in. And just follow that line. Depending on how thawed or frozen your brownies are, you may have to stop and rinse off your scraper. Or you may be able to use a sharp paring knife. I try to do mine completely frozen. This one has thawed out a little bit, but they cut, uh, they cut neater when they're completely frozen and they won't crack if you ice them frozen. So it's not something that you have to worry about in that regard. 
Okay, so you're going to cut in the other direction, and I'm just going to cut enough to uh, show you how to package the nine count, and then we'll move on to the next variety. Okay. And you're going to take your spatula. You can break down the side of the box or you can leave it intact. Um, breaking down the side of the box makes it easier to get it out without tearing them up. You're just going to slide your spatula under, pick up three at a time. Move them into your packaging. And you're done. Um, to keep your production flow moving, your best scenario would be to do all your cuts at once and then all your packages at once. But just for demonstration purposes, we just did one. Okay, here is a display example with some different uh, size packages, different combinations, uh, some things that you could use in your store to build a display with. And uh, we want to thank you again for watching our brownie tutorial. And if you have any questions, uh, any concerns, give, give myself, give Rodney a call. Um, again, this is easy. It's got a great gross profit. It's something that you can do with no special tools, no special equipment. Um, no special skills, just hands and icing. Uh, dry storage, the only thing that requires any sort of perishable storage are the brownies. They stay frozen until you use them. So, you know, don't miss out on this opportunity. It's a good, uh, good time to start it going into the holidays and, you know, moving forward from there, it's something you can carry every day.